<clears throat> Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, Honourable Prime Minister, uh, Honourable Leader of Opposition, Member of Parliament, I thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak on the 2017-2018 National Budget. <clears throat> Madam Speaker, the 2017-2018 National Budget is a continuation of converting promises into action by the Fiji First Government, and that has resulted in sustainable and inclusive development. And let, me, let me reiterate something we've said quite a number of times. It is not an election gimmick, as suggested by the other side. Madam Speaker, through the diligent efforts of this government, we have made great strides in advancing our country towards becoming a modern nation state. And the development outcomes that we have achieved is derived from a long-term and forward-looking strategy and builds on the work that we have been carrying out for the past number of years. Like the Honourable Prime Minister spelt out this morning, Madam Speaker, we have a long-term vision. A long-term vision, Madam Speaker, to better the lives of all Fijians and not focus on what the opposition says, not focus on the elite as claimed by them. Madam Speaker, the opposition is far too preoccupied with politicking and that they've become short-sighted and they've lost touch with the grassroots communities in Fiji. They are unaware of the needs and the aspirations of our young people, nor do they sense, nor do they sense the entrepreneurial ambitions of our mothers, our fathers, sons, and daughters who want to use, Madam Speaker, their innate cre creativity and talents to start and develop their own businesses rather than being job seekers. Madam Speaker, the opposition's lack of ideas throughout this morning and this afternoon and lack of constructive input towards this budget debate is a great disservice to the Fijian people, those, those that actually pay their money, Madam Speaker. Thus far, Madam Speaker, the response has lacked any form of cohesion, and it's akin to like when you throw a stone, Madam Speaker, with a blindfold on, hoping that one will hit somewhere. <laughs> As was evident this morning, Madam Speaker, there is no vision, no focus, and no plans, absolutely no plans, as to how to take this country forward. Madam Speaker, the initiatives outlined in the national budget are integral to achieving government's vision of socio-economic empowerment. I think that's a word that misses them completely. Socio-economic empowerment for the Fijian people, which is in the best interest of our current and our future generations. Madam Speaker, Honorable Randrondo this morning could not be more wrong by stating that growth is not inclusive and that only an elite group of people, grouping of people, continue to earn the most and enjoy the biggest slice of the economic pie. I wish to remind him, Madam Speaker, that he might be suffering from a little bit of amnesia. Maybe he doesn't read the news. That a considerable portion of the budget was devoted to the growth of micro, small, and medium enterprises, yeah, yeah, yeah. and the development of youth entrepreneurs, which was also spelled out in a very lucid fashion by the Honorable Prime Minister this morning. In fact, judging from what the opposition has put forward with regards to some of the larger companies with respect to water and major supermarket chains, with not one speaker offering anything constructive for the woman youth or disadvantaged, it is the opposition, Madam Speaker, that is for the elite, not this side of the House, Madam Speaker. No. The government, Madam Speaker, is for all Fijians and including the yeah, most yeah, vulnerable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Madam Speaker, the development of small, micro, small and medium enterprises is of great importance to the Fijian economy and to all Fijians, especially those at grassroots level. This is this because a strong MSME sector and environment propagates jobs, generates income, stimulates entrepreneurship, eradicates poverty and advances the livelihoods of rural Fijians. Madam Speaker, the allocation of $2.8 million in the budget will assist in the establishment of the MSME Central Coordinating Agency, which will provide streamlined services in business licensing and designed to create a, a single window system, but will focus on small, micro and small entrepreneurs 
business incubation, mentoring and training, as well as business innovation. Now, Speaker, I'm extremely happy to say that the Young Entrepreneurship Scheme, short form yes, will be the first initiative that will be delivered through this business innovation service arm of the MSME Central Coordinating Agency. The yes, as the Honorable Prime Minister had highlighted, is intended to promote and harness the talents of young Fijian entrepreneurs to become job creators rather than just being fated uh, as job seekers. Madam Speaker, the grants of up to $20,000 will be given to successful young budding Fijian entrepreneurs between the ages of 18 and 30 to develop or expand their innovative business ideas. And I say that word innovative for a very particular reason. As the Honourable Prime Minister confirmed this morning, prominent senior executives from the private sector with significant experience and business acumen have agreed to partner with the government to steer this exciting initiative. To further illustrate the Fijian government's commitment to empower the grassroots people, communities, and advance rural Fijian livelihoods, another initiative, Madam Speaker, the Roadside Stores Initiative, will be rolled out in the next financial year. Half a million dollars has been allocated to undertake a pilot project to develop 50 semi-permanent and 30 portable roadside stores. This, Madam Speaker, is an effort to improve the quality and standardize the structure of the roadside stalls that are now along the highways, in villages and other locations outside municipal boundaries. The vast majority of these roadside stalls are old and makeshift, and hence the structures are susceptible to the elements and natural disasters and are a risk to its occupants and bystanders. The new structures will be designed to withstand natural disasters and will be constructed in accordance with relevant building and OHS standards. Madam Speaker, the highly successful MSBG scheme will be continued into the new financial year, and since the inception of the MSBG scheme in 2015, 9,750 micro and small businesses have benefited from this initiative with a total investment of $9.3 million. Moving on, Madam Speaker, we attribute the tourism industries success to the strong partnership between government and all key stakeholders, contrary, contrary to the belief on the other side. A number of key initiatives have been undertaken to utilize our natural assets, infrastructure, and unique attractions to develop Fiji as a top-class tourism destination. Tourism Fiji's marketing budget is a $5.5 million increase. will help, help stimulate tourism activities through market development strategies aimed at increasing returns on government investments. And furthermore, Madam Speaker, Tourism Fiji will review the national branding strategy to re revitalize and position Fiji more effectively in the competitive global arena. Madam Speaker, the Ministry will also continue to encourage the linkages between tourism sector and other economic sectors, such as agriculture through the supply of goods and products from our local communities to hotels and eventually our visitors. And one key initiative is the Fijian organic brand that will provide high quality niche products to the tourism sector. And this will be undertaken in partnership with the Ministry of Agriculture. Mr. Speaker, I don't want to say too much about what's been harped on for the last three years about Qantas and the golf, and I've always answered it. And about a million tourists, I keep saying a million tourists. One thing I must remember, Madam Speaker, is that everything is being done in Fiji with reference to our infrastructure. Without the infrastructure, we can't bring two million tourists into the country. We will collapse. Yeah. Everything is being done in a sustainable fashion, Madam Speaker. And to tell, all they need to do is check the numbers. A million tourists, you can bring a million tourists, you, are, you only might earn a billion dollars. At the current rate, it is always, Madam Speaker, about the yield that you fetch from the amount of tourists. Yeah. And we have been on an upward trajectory for a substantial amount of time. So there's nothing wrong with neither Tourism Fiji nor Fiji Airways, Madam Speaker. I shudder to think where they get their facts from. But maybe, maybe, just maybe, the honorable member who keeps going on about Qantas might have some shares in Qantas or something. I'm not sure, Madam Speaker. <laughs> Madam Speaker, in response to that illogical statement, it seems like Honourable Member might be a bit stuck in the past. There is no new ideas on how we should take tourism forward. 
And as I've said on numerous occasions, the Fijian Tourism Development Plan has an underlying focus on quality rather than quantity. This has put us well on track. We are well on track, Madam Speaker, I can guarantee you that, to achieve a $2.2 billion industry by 2021, Madam Speaker. It is important that the development of the tourism industry is done, as I said, in a sustainable manner so as not to commit, not to commit the same mistakes of countries like the Maldives, Madam Speaker, which the Honourable Gavoka has a habit of comparing to Fiji. The growth of tourism in Maldives has negatively impacted the island's limited water resources, damaged its coral reefs, Madam Speaker, and damaged its fragile ecosystem. Fiji, Madam Speaker, does not want to go down the same path, Madam Speaker. Therefore, our focus, Madam Speaker, on mass tourism, but high-end, including golf and sports, and spectators and players, is the way forward, Madam Speaker. Yeah, yeah. It is appalling that the opposition chooses volume over our fragile ecosystem and has a myopic view, an absolute myopic view, that Fiji is only sun, sea, and sand destination. For your information, we have developed a niche market in mice, niche market in sports, a niche market. Operative word, Honorable Gavoka, I said developed. It might have existed before, but it is now developed. Weddings, honeymoons, wellness, to name a few, Madam Speaker. The announcement by the Honorable Attorney General, Minister for Economy, of an art gallery is just one example of our efforts to diversify our tourism products. Madam Speaker, I request that the Honorable, Honorable Gavoka stop misleading the workers of the tourism sector with the incomplete and incorrect information on a service tax that is for the welfare of workers. Can the Honorable Gavoka please provide the source of his information on this particular tax? Madam Speaker, again, in response to the inc incorrect information provided by the opposition, again, on backpacker operations, I want to set the record straight, Madam Speaker. The record is, is this. Honorable Randonro said that there are uh, 12 backpacker operations in Yesawa. There are 25 backpacker operations in Yesawa, Madam Speaker. This information comes from the tax office, Madam Speaker, taxpaying backpacker operations. That to date, no backpacker or business in Yasawa or anywhere in Fiji has actually been closed. In fact, the number, the number, Madam Speaker, of STT payers in Fiji wide has increased from 1,008 to, in 2013 to 1,836 in 2017. Since 2015 to 2017, a total of 684 new STT payers have been registered. Madam Speaker, again, unsubstantiated claims have been made by the opposition that there are no new players in the tourism industry. I beg to differ, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, we've just launched the FNPF's Marriott at Mom, the $70 million investment by Pullman in Wailola, which is near completion. Another $500, a $500 million investment in Kumave, which is a Wyndham Silk Road Arc uh, investment. Six Census Fiji, Vunambaka, an investment of about $300 million. Kokomo, Madam Speaker, the list is endless. So please, don't try and fool the public. Furthermore, Madam Speaker, <coughs> As announced by the Honorable Attorney General and Minister of Economy, a Building and Construction Approvals Committee will be established that will provide a single window for, for building permit applications for the construction of commercial and industrial buildings. This process will not bypass a set of rules and regulations for the construction of buildings, such as approvals for fire safety, occupational health and, health and safety, and health, to name a few, but will be an inclusive process that ensures in the future that potential bottlenecks are resolved before they rise. Madam Speaker, the fast track process will bring together the relevant approval agencies as part of the Building Construction Approvals Committee and, and permits will be granted within a strict timeline. Madam Speaker, I am pleased to also info, update this August House that for the first time in our nation's history, we will be opening a trade commission in Auckland, New Zealand. An allocation of $0.4 million has been made, $0.4 million made for the establishment of the trade commission. Trade investment missions are important to, to raising Fiji's profile as an ideal investment destination and securing new markets. Madam Speaker, just recently we had a successful three-day investment mission in New Zealand where we were able to facilitate over $200 million New Zealand dollars 
in investments that are planned for Fiji in the tourism, energy, shipping and healthcare sectors. This augurs well for the Fijian economy and will lead to the creation of numerous jobs. Mr. Speaker, in addition to investments, we've secured new markets in China for bottled water, non-ET, beauty products and alcoholic beverages. For the Australian market, we are facilitating access for virgin coconut oil and for agri-products such as taro cassava in about a thousand Woolworths stores. So the doom and gloom, I don't know where it comes from, Madam Speaker. <laughs> Again, Madam Speaker, just with respect to PESA Plus in EPA, I love it when they say, oh, why don't we just sign it? Madam Speaker, we are not going to sell our souls. Fiji is on the cusp of something really great. We are not going to give up our policy space. We want to be a nation where we stand up on our own, Madam Speaker. We want to be a nation where we are not dependent, Madam Speaker. We will not sign unless it is good for us to do so, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, again, again, with a way forward, Madam Speaker, there will be an, we will be establishing a fully serviced manufacturing and services zone in Warambitia, Lotoka, which will stimulate economic activity. The total sum of $8 million has been allocated to the Warambita Economic Zone. The project will benefit our strong manufacturing base and of course the world-class ICT connectivity and growing and young talented workforce. Madam Speaker, the project is being undertaken used a phased approach and in partnership with IFC and the World Bank, which has given it the tick-off. So I really don't know where they get their facts and their information from, Madam Speaker, about us not being a destination. Madam Speaker, there are also prospects for developing shopping infrastructure and marine development on that particular site. Moving on to lands, Madam Speaker, let me also correct some of the anomalies that have come out from the other side. Mr. Speaker, the budget provides a much-needed platform to drive the development of both lands and mineral sectors in the right direction. Coming financial year is one that is truly worth looking forward to. The budget reiterates the government's stance on promoting vibrant, equitable and dynamic management of our land and mineral resources for a sustainable environment economic future. The allocation of $2.5 million for the land bank investments is an effort to make more land available and promote the productive utilization is an effort uh, um, uh, through the land bank. For the Honorable Dulak Iverata's information, who's kindly left the house, the land bank is using the market rate as the basis for rental assessment and not the UCV as wrongfully claimed. The land bank offers other benefits as compared to the limited monopoly land leasing opportunities that existed before, such as the proper survey of Itoke land prior to any lease issuance. In addition, 100% lease proceeds go directly to the landowners, Madam Speaker. The development of state land is very much in demand in the specific areas in Lotoka of Field 40, uh, Vakamai Soso and Lambasa, and this has been allocated $4.4 million, an upward revision of 1.7. Madam Speaker, the ministry has also been allocated a further uh, 540 for the maintenance of existing subdivisions. Madam Speaker, <clears throat> the formalization of informal settlements, again, not a band-aid solution, Madam Speaker, this, as claimed by the Honourable Member. These occupants of state land had been occupying these lands for a long time and previous governments had failed to assist, Madam Speaker. Then. The issue of the approval notices is part of a process that has to be followed and the proper approvals are sought and obtained from the relevant authorities. And I reiterate, not a band-aid solution. Honourable Member, but is, an, is part of a government's innovative solution, a commitment and assurance towards the security of tenure and assistance to the disadvantage in informal settlements, and merely them getting what the Constitution says that they should get, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, in response to Dulak, Honourable Dulak Ibarata's claims and doubts on the spending of the allocation of the uh, Ministry of Lands and uh, inability to utilise the Ministry's allocated budget, Specifically, the lack of surveying capacity, the Ministry has achieved targeted 12 government survey of Ito Kailan for the financial year as planned and as budget for in the 2016-2017 fiscal year. Regarding the mahogany plantations, Madam Speaker, the Ministry has exhausted the budget for the surveying of Nukuroa and Nambutini plantations. Incorrect facts again, Madam Speaker. We've also achieved the target of five projects plus an additional of total six projects for the maintenance of the existing subdivision. In addition, Madam Speaker, $4.4 million is allocated to purchase multi-drilling rigs, chain drilling rigs, support vehicles, and a compressor, which we use for groundwater assessment and development for both small and large islands. 
Madam Speaker, there is also allocation for the procurement of specialized vehicles to support the monitoring of the gravel and sand extraction around the country. This, in hindsight, speaks in volumes as its budgetary allocation further cements government's protection of the ecosystem biodiversity as it provides a much needed boost to our monitoring teams on the ground. The Ministry is looking forward to the new fiscal year, Madam Speaker. And I'd like to finish off by let me lightening it up a little bit in the House, Madam Speaker. There's a couple of things that need to be said. If we liken the budget today to a festival, Madam Speaker, we have many contestants on the other side. You have misconceived, misconception, you have mistake, misinformation, misguided, and misled, Madam Speaker. Unfortunately, Madam Speaker, they've all missed the boat. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I commend the budget to the House.